Hey everyone, it's Justine, and today I am creating a few cards as a part of the blog hop for So Suzy Stamps' fourth anniversary. As many of you know, I got my start with So Suzy Stamps on their very first design team, and so I was really happy to be invited as a friend or family to join in the celebration. So I'm going to be working with my favorite line of stamps, and there are two new ones to the collection. And I'm going to be working with the fairy stamps, which if you know my channel, you've seen them several times in my earlier videos. So I'm going to be showing you how you can mask off color and create different color bursts to create clean and simple cards with beautiful pops of color. So as you can see, I have lined up my fairy stamp here, and I'm going to use purple tape to mask off an area that I want. So I want her to sort of be blowing the color into the sky, is how I want it to look. So I just keep lining up my stamp here and then adding the tape in order to mask up my area. So purple tape is a really great adhesive to use for ink blending. It is a very low tack adhesive, so it actually is going to not rip your paper or anything like that when you're masking. It keeps everything in place and I find the roll to be very, very large, so don't feel bad if I waste a lot of purple tape. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and add my color to the card. So I'm going to be using three different colors here. These are generally my go-to colors throughout the video that I use for my oxide ink collection. I'm gonna be using Wilted Violet for this one, followed by Picked Raspberry, and then lastly, I'm going to be using Squeezed Lemon. And so I'm just being careful to stay within the washi tape or the purple tape here as I'm blending along. I'm not really worried about really hard lines or anything because the oxide is able to be buffed out. So I was able to just add it to this area by just pushing my blending tool into the cardstock to make sure that it got saturated quickly and added a nice solid layer of color. So once I peel off the masking tape, this is where the magic happens and it gets really exciting. So I'm going to go ahead now and stamp my fairy stamp. This is the Fairy Blowing Stars stamp from So Suzy Stamps. And it is a cling stamp, which means that when I go ahead and stamp with my mini Misty here, I'm going to need to remove the foam piece that belongs inside the Misty because I need a little bit more depth in my to my cardstock because the stamp is thicker than your clear stamp. So I'm going to be using VersaFine Black Onyx ink here and you can see that I ink up and stamp probably about three times is what I wanted and just to make sure that it is a nice solid black but it is quite saturated at the moment so just give it a second to dry before you go ahead and touch the fairy. For my second card here you can see that I've added my washi tape so that there are two panels there on the side and it's going in a diagonal to diagonal look. I'm going to be using some blues for this one here. I am using Blueprint Sketch Salty Ocean and then lastly Peacock Feathers. Now as you can see I'm going in a circular motion. This is in real time so you can see the exact speed in which I do it. I am putting slight pressure onto the cardstock background. If I were to be using regular distress inks I would be going as light as possible and building up the color. But because the oxides don't leave off the har don't give off the harsh lines as much as the distress o regular distress do, I am able to go ahead and just buffer out any lines that are occurring. Okay, so now that my panel is all finished here, I have my nice little ombre blend. I'm going to go ahead and peel off the masking tape, which is always my favorite part about masking off areas. And then I have my panel here. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to stamp my fairy. Now this fairy here is an older one and it's one of my favorites. I've used it so many times. This one here is called the Dancing Fairy. I originally had thought that I was going to have that sparkle or that fairy dust sort of going up from the fairy, but I did change my mind in the end and ended up using that in the inside of one of the cards. But that is an excellent add-on for the fairy stamp line. Now, as you can see with the oxide inks, if you are stamping with oxide inks, the oxide inks are gonna show through the black ink because the ink sits on the surface as well as dips into the cardstock because it's a pigment dye blend. Now, you just have to keep stamping over and over again and it should be okay. However, you are going to get that seeping through, which is why I really like to stamp several times using a misty stamping tool. Now for my next card here, I'm using a different color combination. I'm starting off with Abandoned Coral, followed by the Carved Pumpkin, and then the Squeezed Lemonade. I have a very thin strip here going from top to bottom, and this is just another way that you could go ahead and add color. Now I'm going ahead now and I'm adding another fairy stamp on here. This is also a brand new one and it is the Swinging Fairy stamp set. 
And by stamp set, I mean stamp, of course. I always seem to always say stamp set instead of single stamp because it's so rare that I stamp with stamps that are available just simply individually, which is another reason why I really like starting off with So Suzy stamps because it was really great to just pick and choose stamps that you want. So how many times do you get a stamp set and you had only bought that stamp set for one or two of the images and you never touch the other ones? That's what I like about these ones is nothing goes to waste. So now I'm just finishing up this card panel as well and moving on to my next. Now I wanted to do something a little bit more complicated for those of us that are more advanced card makers. Now I went ahead with a piece of the purple tape and I'm going in and doing sort of a fan look for this one. So I went in with the pink picked raspberry with just one solid color and then I'm going to go ahead and rearrange each one of them to make these solid fan shapes. Now the key to this and to getting a good impression is when you are taping next to the colored area, you do want to leave a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of overlap in the color so you don't get any white spots in between the color. If you get white spots, you'll just have to readjust your tape and then go ahead over it with the ink. You'll see that that happens to me once in this video as well. So I'm going with the picked raspberry and then I went ahead with the abandoned coral, then carved pumpkin, and then I'm going with squeezed lemonade. Now with squeezed lemonade, you're going to have to be a little bit careful because if you have ink on top of the purple tape, it is going to pick it up and the color can be a little bit sensitive to that. I found that didn't happen the first time, but the second time it definitely happened. So as you can see, I'm getting this really fun look where you can really see each distinct color, but they're right next to each other. And I'm going to go ahead and repeat each of these colors until I get to the bottom of the card panel. So once everything is all finished, I'm just finishing off the bottom here. I have this really pretty fan that goes from one corner to the other. And I can go ahead now and just buffer out any areas where the tape might have slipped or anything like that. Remember if your tape is starting to sort of curl up, it's time to change the tape for a new tape. You can reuse the purple tape quite often, but it will eventually get saturated with the ink and you will need to change it. Now for this one here, again, just stamping in the VersaFine ink. I'm using another Fairy by So Susie. This one's so pretty. It is the Fairy with a flower. I really liked to use this one in sympathy cards. I thought the flower was really perfect, but my background obviously doesn't suit a sympathy card for this one. It's just really perfect for spring. Now you can go ahead and get even more diverse and complex. You can create your own sort of patterns throughout the whole image if you'd like. So for this one, I started off with the, my standard horizontal area of color. So this is something that I use in my cards very often. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more complex. I'm gonna go ahead and add a piece of purple tape right here in the center on an angle. I'm using two colors today, Wilted Violet and Salty Ocean. So I'm just going to add both colors there onto the side. I'm rubbing back and forth to get the color as saturated as possible. So when that is all finished, I'm just going to go ahead and move my purple tape over so I can stamp the other half of the background. This one here is going to be purple. And you can see that the purple is quite a bit larger than the other side of the blue. That wasn't necessarily done on purpose, but I was able to come up with a solution on how to make that work. So I went ahead with the Wilted Violet and just added that and saturated the background again. And then I went ahead and just added another strip of purple tape to the card design here so I could block off an area in the center. So in that center area, I originally had it wilted violet and I went over with a salty ocean to combine the two colors. And you'll see that they don't just automatically blend, one sort of sits on top of the other and you get a whole new color. So now I have this sort of trendy little stripe going on and I decided to just keep going with it and really give it a try. So I went and masked off a strip at the bottom of the card panel and I decided to ink that up using the Salty Ocean and then I did the same at the top for the purple or the wilted violet. So now that I have that done here, I'm ready to move on to the top strip. I'm going to be doing the purple as I had said. And this is where I noticed that my tape was actually getting a little bit too saturated. It wasn't really sticking on the edge anymore, so I needed to use another piece of fresh tape. And this was just to preserve the image. If my tape curls up, I'm going to get color underneath, and those really sharp lines that we're creating right now are not going to exist. So I'm going ahead and rubbing in the Wilted Violet to get that stripe on top. Now I'm going to remove the tape and see how I like it. So I have the purple blue, the little area in the center that I did, and then the strip on the top and the bottom. And I really love the way that that turned out. 
And then I decided to just go ahead and add a little bit more washi tape. I wanted to make a zigzag from that pattern that I created earlier. So I just needed to go in and just mask off a couple of squares here. And I went in with some purple ink here over top of the blue. And then I removed my washi tape and you can see I have the zigzag going down and I'm going to now place the tape on the top now this time and I'm going to place that on either edge of the stripe that I created before. And I'm going to go this time in with the blue because I wanted to have blue on purple and then purple on blue. So once that was all removed, I have this really cool design that I've created myself. And of course, you could the possibilities are endless. Geometric shapes are so fun to make. And you could really just come up with some great backgrounds. Okay, now I'm finished creating backgrounds here. I just need to stamp the final Moonlit Fairy. This is another one of my favorites and definitely one of the So Suzy Originals. This uh, stamp I've had for quite a few years. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you how I finished off all of the cards and which sentiments I used and how I stamped the inside of the card. So I went ahead um, using my spray here and I was going to put the water in my hand for more control, but I went actually ahead and just spritzed the background of these. I probably should have done this before I had stamped the images, but you are able to get quite a controlled spray using the Distress Spray bottle, so I didn't really bother. And since the VersaFine ink when it's dry is waterproof, it's not a big deal. So I just went along and just added some water to each of these so that it would react with the Distress ink. I went ahead and just did this final background. This is where you're going to see it the most since there's so much color on the background, how that water reacts and how cool it looks. Using an A2 card base, it measures four and a quarter by five and a half when it's finished. I went ahead and glued all of my panels down onto my card. Now I'm using Tombow Mono Liquid Adhesive to do this and I am sticking them on my card so that I have a nice white background or a white frame around my card. And I'm going to do this to all five off screen. I just wanted to show you that once if you're following along and making step by step as we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the outside and insides of my cards. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this thank you stamp. It's a quite a large stamp and I thought it would look really perfect. And it, it really makes a nice background. And then I stamped you're amazing in the, in the inside. So I went ahead and stamped that fairy dust here using some of the Distress Oxide in Picked Raspberry or Wilted Violet. Then I went ahead and stamped the you're amazing on top to sort of tie in the outside and the inside. For the blue panel here, I decided to use birthday wishes. And then for the inside, it says, um, wishing you the happiest moments a heart can have, or a heart can know, sorry, happy birthday. And then I'm going ahead with this one here. This is one of the newer sentiments uh, who says there's no such thing as fairies and those who don't believe in magic will never find it. I think those are really cute sentiments to add to a fairy card. And lastly, I did a you got this. And then on the center, I did the greatest revenge is, is to accomplish what others said you say you cannot do, which is another one of my favorite So Susie sentiments. And then for the final card, I thought for this cute swing card, um, that this stamp here would be perfect, kind of a swinging into your dreams, and it is the very famous quote by Eleanor Roosevelt, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. You can get a final look at all the cards here, the five different banner or backgrounds that I created. Don't forget to go ahead and join in on the blog hop for So Suzy Stamps. There's a $25 giveaway being given away, as well as a lot of inspiration using So Suzy Stamps.